beat junglers. I think it's just like super, it's just super cute to me to see those offbeat junglers rocking out. So Rivington, you missed it, Jungle Alistair. What? Kobe24 is doing Jungle Alistair, because you look at the lineup and you're like, Annie, Tarek, uh, Malzahar, Ash, Alistair. Oh, oh right. <laughs> I like it. That's going to be fun, yeah. So uh, Epic Gamer ready to go. It's really going to be fun. I'm, I'm actually going to really enjoy seeing Vayne Nunu, because, oh man, it's going to be, oh, here, I scale up attack speed. By the way, here's some attack speed. Um, this is a really, this is an extremely strong damaging lineup. So we, ha we saw this problem last time with Rock Solid versus OGV, which ended up not being a huge problem, where there's no initiate here. There's a lot of CC and a lot of, like, if you fight us, we'll do things to you, but they can't cause a fight. You look at this team from CLG, and it's like, Alistair has Flash Stun, if any arrow, Malzahar can kind of do it, Terrot can do it, Annie can do it, like, you might look at this lineup and be like, wow, EG's got a good team, they have a lot of damage, and you're like... Oh my god, CLG's team can blow up anyone from anywhere on the map. Oh, <laughs> and so CLG looks afraid at level 1. They're hiding in a very random brush. Oh, this is where EG went last time. The very first game, EG went through here, uh, I think. Oh no, that was that was actually Team Solomon versus uh, Whale. But they're going a very strange way around the map, trying to find a very strange gank to go for. And they're going to come around the top-hand side of the jungle. And they're actually going to, they're almost going to catch Nunu. They're going to go invade and steal. So yeah, they, they ward their blue and they go and invade the other one. Meanwhile, EG knows they can't win at one. They just, this team is not a level one team, and they're just, they're going to give it away, which they should. It's it's the right play. And they're almost like trying to bait, like they almost want to like take those wolves and bait them out, but they know it's just a terrible idea. So yeah, CL, so EG knows CLG's there. They could try to jump them because I mean the Terra and Annie are on the front. Okay, there we go. Annie has pulled it. EG has not done anything about this yet. Ooh, where are they going to go? They... Oh, good job, I told you they pulled the minions down, but Hot Shot's in the front! Hot Shot's in the front! Hot Shot's going to go down, most likely. He's taking so much damage. That's a flash right there. Giant stun from Annie. They're going to try to run away right now. Uh, oh, St. Vigis is super low. The silence misses from the heart. St. Vigis is going to get first blood. Yes, he does. He does go down. Uh, Cow does have blue buff, but uh, Ash is running away. They, Yeah, that, that's actually to be expected somewhat. They, they, they lost their cooldowns, and the damage effort came in. Like, you know they're going to ward that brush. And, and we see the exact same thing as last time, where, you know, they got the puff, but they got first-blooded. Well, eh, you know, maybe not the worst thing in the world. So it's the exact same, literally the exact same situation as last game, where you, they steal a jungler buff onto the jungler, and then someone dies for it. Um, they might even been, I forget who it was last game, who died. I'm going to laugh if it was St. Vicious both times. I would laugh. I don't think it is, but it'd be Ooh, funny if that were true. Fucking hell. Kobe 24, I think he can still cut it and do okay. He's not taking, yeah, he's taking like 20 damage per hit, so, in his, yeah, he's going to have pulverized. So he's going to make this one out with, what, like, two hits to spare. Um, that's enough, of course, so. Annie versus Swain is going to be interesting, because they both have sustain mechanics, where Annie, every time she Qs and last hits a minion, she'll get mana back, and every time Swain last hits a minion with anything, he gets some mana back, so. Um, it could be a very spammy lane, and I'm curious to see if Sauce plays super aggressive or what, but uh, I know that, that Swain is not a good ant uh, last hitter against tower, because he's all dots, pretty much. Um, aside from the AoE on, on never moves, so. Uh, it's almost worth it for Big Fat GG just to push him out and then just super worry about Nunu. Because, I mean, Nunu's an amazing ganger, so you have to be careful about that. But in, in some ways, like, you'll be okay if you do it right. I mean, the double slow, though, is pretty hard to fight against. Probably doesn't want to push at all. But it would it would give him a gold advantage if he didn't die, is all I'm saying. But it would be unsafe. So, bottom lane, we see uh, Dyrus taking a fair amount of damage, getting shielded up by double lift. But it's a non-heal lane, which means Terek can initiate a fight with a stun, and Chester can clink him down with those arrows. And then Jonna can shield, but she can't heal that damage back. So you can wear him down doing that. And oh, the damage output is pretty heavy on Big Fetch. He's dropping him to half health. He fires back on a Swain doing a fair amount as well, but I feel like Swain came out ahead there. So good play from Sauce. He's going to keep last hitting minions to refund his mana. And every time he does that, he's going to get uh, just basically closer and closer to getting another combo that he can use just to push down Annie. You know, right now it seems Corky's pushing in pretty hard. We see Alistar moving to the bottom lane here through the dragon area. He does have that blue buff on, so he's going to be able to do this strong. If he does have flash, he can make it in and pop back double lift. <gasps> Not enough time. They just made it out in a very nice condemn by the hands of Di uh, Dyrus to stop anything from happening there. Mid was taken down, as Freak said before. Big Fat GG did not have the upper hand on the first fight between Sauce and GG, so he was taken down. The second one was just too much. Nevermore was probably caught on that fight, and uh, GG just got caught out of position that one in his own lane. A very nice try by Alistar down bottom, but a very great job by Janna 
and Vayne making it out by pixels on that one. Yeah, unfortunately though, the, the weird thing is is actually Victor TG DC'd on that one. He, he I don't know what oh. happened, but yeah, he, he died as he DC'd, so I think the free, the kill was free, and I don't know what just happened to him, but suddenly he's not able to play in this game, and so Kobe, 20, Kobe 24 going to take over that, uh, and actually Sauce pulled turret aggro, so wow. that's actually a lot of pain that he just took there. Kobe 24 going to put, put out that self heal. Um, he doesn't have a lot of magic resist, he's only got that 10, so he could take a lot of damage here. There's the ignite, actually, Sauce going for it, and Kobe 24 getting really low, that could be a kill, and it does! Sauce picks that one up, gets a free golem buff in level 5, nice job there. Did not see that coming. Though. Yeah, it, it, it's the difference between MR per level and flat MR glyphs. Yep. That, that's all it was, so... Great play there by Sauce, and a level 6 with golem means infinite health and infinite mana. Just gonna keep just spamming out that gold right there, full, full heals pretty much on that ultimate. Mal's Harvest Corky up top, still not too bad. Oh, actually, interesting enough, Hotshot GG playing the uh, the mage right there, of course. Then you've got the uh, the triple carry style. You're going to have to have someone else drop on to that. And Hotshot does play uh, a fair amount of Malzahar, so... Makes sense there. Still left hitting minions up top. West Rice, though, winning that lane. He's out of mana for the most part, but he's winning in health, so he can keep bullying Hotshot around if he gets in range for auto-attacks. Oh, this is really good for him. He got in right at the right time. If he, he doesn't want to walk into range of the turret for the ultimate, but uh, West Rice now level six has the uh, has the missile barrage has has one missile to shoot so far. Uh, Hot shot is getting kind of low. West Rice can't quite full combo him to dead, but he can keep lowering his health down and down and make him chug through potions. And now that Hot Shot's out of potions, he can really push him around this game. Looks like Ash is going to move over and take mid against Sauce. It's a little bit of a dangerous lane, of course, but uh, it's the only place he can really be. Terra going to take over bottom lane as best he can. It looks like not much said in all chat from CLG, so I'm not sure what they think the issue might be. Um, maybe there's a power energy in DC, who knows. But uh, Alistair coming around, West Rice. Oh, he gets wow. headbutted. He could have got. He could have went for the pulverize, but Hot Shot GG a little bit too far when to make anything happen. It's fine of him to not really go for anything there. Um, but nice little try on the gank there. Gonna miss the last hit of that minion. He actually pulled back, and the the void link did not go for it. Yeah, Vayne dominating mid lane right now. It's just really putting it down to Ash Swain. Yes, thank you. The Ains. Uh, Vayne yeah. down bottom with a uh, double lift. They're able to do a great job here. Darius double lift. Looks like GG has reconnected, so he will get back to his lane. It's going to be hard for Ash in middle, being two levels below Swain, so she's kind of just getting knocked around right now. And they are going to be able to do a lot of damage to this turret. I believe they may be able to take it down. They only have two more shots to uh, get out of there. There's the two, and they will have to back up. And we are going to see what happens here as uh, they go back. There are three in middle. Annie is kind of rotating around now to bottom lane as Ash will stay mid and try to get an advantage here on levels. And we are going to see what the deal is. Seven minutes and 50 seconds into the game. Malzahar and Corky still going at it up top. No turrets have been taken down yet. But it looks like mid turret has taken a lot of damage from Swain and the minions that are making it happen. Yeah, so CLG asking for a regame because of the DC. But uh, to be fair, you know, EG up in a very significant advantage. The first blood at you know, two minutes in and all that stuff. Uh, not really the kind of situation where you're like, yeah, let's just throw away the early game advantage. Um... So uh, CLG, you know, unfortunate, of course, with the circumstances, uh, but, you know, the game will continue on as far as I know. They're welcome to ask Evans for a real check, but pretty sure this game's going to keep going. Um, and here we go, Corky jumping out of Hotshot GG. Hotshot actually out of mana pretty much, so this could be really good for West Race. He's landing a lot of rockets there, and the flash! One more rocket would have been the kill, but he was uh, not able to land that last one. Not able to quite get enough damage, I guess afraid of getting ulted to the turret or something. But uh, making it out right there. And Big Fat GG actually getting the kill at bottom lane. We'll pick up the kill on Dyrus. Trying to stay alive against Double Lift. And oh, we got the heal from Terex. He's going to get it. And Double Lift goes down. They get the kill on Jonna pretty much free. Vayne went down. And Double Lift was just screwed right there. Um, and yeah, now Damien said that, that Double Lift DC'd. So players are getting plagued by disconnects this game. I don't understand what's going on with these people. It's really unfortunate for them. Um, and at least it evened out in this game for what that one's worth. But. Um, players not keeping their internets up quite as well as they'd like, I guess, but West Rice still fighting against Hotshot GG, at least he's standing in this game, he's fixed his issues, and uh, we'll see what else they can do. Swain's still trying to go get some damage out onto Chowster, not getting uh, a lot there, he's keeping himself alive at that turret, the turret's not really taking, well, any more damage, it's already gotten quite low, down to 500 health, and that's quite the advantage to have. You, you kill mid turret and you got a lot of extra breathing room, you got basically this entire uh, Golem, you know, top and top and bottom jungle are actually really more available for entrance because you, you basically cut off one of those escape routes. Um, because it's no longer safe to do so. So Annie gonna stay at bottom, only level 5 unfortunately, uh, against Vayne. Looks like Tarek is coming down to support him, and we'll see how they play out with that one. 
See Corky still fighting against Malzahar up top. Malzahar will not take that rocket to the face. Uh, we'll look at the last hit tally right now because we're going to really want to look at this one. We got 70 and 60, uh, West Rice and Sauce, and they're just leaves and bounds above. Hot GG at 56. Ash at 33. Oh, wow. That's just not great. And Big Fat GG only at 27. So Epic Gamer really outlast hitting these guys. Just really, really, really outlast hitting. Um, and, I mean, they're building themselves a huge advantage. 3 to 2 on kills, so that was a great comeback there from CLG at the bottom lane, picking up 2. Um, I know over here West Rice uh, still fighting Malzahar, but West Rice just outlast hitting him so incredibly hard. He's just very, very far ahead in items. He's already got Tier of the Goddess. Hotshot GG. He does have Catalyst, which is good. Those are the two main first items that you see people get. Koei24 uh, should have been spotted by that ward, so Salt should know, but um, nothing's happening to him just yet, so uh, I guess he'll be okay. Uh, Salt's backing off after pushing that wave down, and Chowster will continue to try to last hit and get himself in as good a situation as Ken. Salt's probably going to rush for that Rod of Ages as soon as possible. And over the top, we see Malzahar and Alistair kind of getting ready for a push, but Lokorki is sort of hiding at his turret pretty successfully. Alistair is going to go back down, drop a drop a ward by Baron. Although he's been he's been pinged, so they know he was there. Yep, that ward spotted him too, so Kobe24 getting spotted entirely by these great wards from Epic Gamer. Uh, Hotshot GG is still soloing top, Corky has gone back to the base. He will last hit what he can, doing a pretty good job of that. Bottom line, we still see Annie doing up with Tarek, the double range stun lane. Nunu come in from the side though, here we go. Ash, oh, the Ash arrow comes in, smacks Tarek in the face, but Dan Din already there to zone them out. That would have been so glorious if they had just jumped on that and picked it up, but... Dan was there at the right time, managed to save him there. Pretty, pretty lucky there. Of course, it's Dyrus also with the three Dorns Blades. Oh, they've got the stun wow. on Dan Din. They've only got the two of them, but it could be enough damage. Will Gigi get the stun off? Will not go for it. St. Vicious burning the flash, not getting the rest of the, the follow-up, unfortunately. Dan Din running away, has lots of bonus health and the movement speed with Blood Boil. So, uh, pretty good shape for those guys. It's like Swain is back to mid. He's going to be heading back to his lane. Alistar waiting for West Rice to push out here, but he only would have made it there by being seen by the wards. Actually, he may not know he's there. He is kind of hugging the right, looking to use his Valkyrie if required to. He could just Phosphorus Blast the area if he was unsure about it, but he definitely doesn't know about the situation. There it is. Headbutted back. And the Mal's ult. He will not headbutt him. He will wait for the Mal's ult to go off and then headbutt. Very Good nicely wave. done. It's just dead. figuring out what nice was going job. on in the situation. Transferring that. <laughs> Malefic Visions over to the ward. <laughs> And a uh, very nice job by Kobe24 being patient on that, knowing he would have knocked him right out of the uh, suppression of Malzahar's all. Acha and GG picking up an assist and a kill there, and they will be able to punish this tower with another another minion wave right behind him to add on to the ones they have right there. Bottom lane, just kind of being zoned out right now. She cannot get close. She's going to get stunned, double stunned. We can see Annie has her passive stun up, and she's just waiting to use one of those. Even if they don't come close to getting the kill, Tibbers could be dropped in that last few moments of the attack. And it may happen right here. No, she's just zoning a little bit more. Swain has been able to take down the turret in mid. It looks like he may be going for the DK here. He could be getting a double kill as he starts to push up. The wards were able to be uh, seen. There. No, he actually hasn't passed any wards. They're just choosing to be careful. Ash's arrow not hitting Swain as he goes up through the, uh, the river. And it looks like everybody's going to regroup to their lanes. Malzahar will back as well as Alistar. They're going to regroup, get some items in their hands, get back in the lane. Ash doing some good damage on mid turret as Corky has left that alone as well as Swain as he went up top, and Corky will come back to try to defend that as bottom lane still being pushed quite heavily and aggressively by uh, Big Fat GG. Yeah, so um, we did see Nunu try to defend that top turret earlier, and he got killed by the combo of Alistair and Malzahar. Uh, so that was a good play by them. I mean, unfortunate by Dan to try to jump in and save that, and it really didn't work out very well for him. Looks like the players, um, for the most part, able to be back in the game. Double is still, unfortunately, in the fountain. I don't know what's happened with him right now, but he's not been able to keep his computer working. Um... And we see Acha GG doing what he can, last hitting a fair amount of these minions, actually doing a good job there, getting three of the four, including the cannon minion. Uh, double lift, yeah, getting... Just, yeah, just, he hasn't gotten back in since, so I'm not sure what's going on with him just yet. But, uh, oh, we see Vicar GG maybe going for this push onto Dyrus. He has 1300 health, so it's going to be difficult, and flat MR blues, but uh, he's almost going for it. He, yeah, he <laughs> almost went for that kill. Did not quite follow up, now his stun is down, he used Disintegrate on some, uh, some minions, so... We've got GG now, just going to be sitting in lane for now. We'll see how the rest of this plays out. He has uh, a little bit of ability power, actually quite a nice amount with uh, runes and mastery. He's rocking the Catalyst Protector right now, so he's going to be uh, nice and nice and sustainable. Really good laning stats. Chaster and Kobe24 rock, uh, running towards the bottom. They're going to try to, to support the rest of that team. Uh, looks like OGB versus Rock Solid is about ready to get going. Uh, the game is full. We will have the picks and bans pretty soon. 
or rather, I mean, Pixie Fans are probably done. The game is full. We'll probably be ready to start soon. And we'll cast uh, the remainder of that game after this one uh, concludes. Oh, the arrow comes off. It will almost tag Nuni. He went up, though. Will not get hit right there. They would have jumped on that pretty easily with Tarek, Alistair, and Annie. Able to follow up with uh, individual stuns of their own. Swain putting Malzahar up top, and Hotshot's going for it. He's doing a lot of damage to Sauce right now, but Sauce still at half health. Putting on bird form, and Hotshot GG not in a good place right now. Uh, the torment goes off. There's the flash. That will be a kill. Sauce picking up Golem buff off of Hotshot GG. Nice job there. Getting himself a kill in a 1v1 up top. Level 12. Uh, versus level 12, just completely outplayed right there. The uh, the, amount, uh, the amount of magic resist that he has from... Uh, it looks like... Let's see, Mercury Treads is 25, and he's got another, uh, what, 23 on top of that. So, a lot of magic resist uh, on this Swain. Definitely being very, very durable. Uh, and, and that's working quite well for him. So, he's going to get top turret pretty much for free now. Just last hit's coming in. He's got the Rod of Ages and the Merc Treads. Super durable champion, 2,000 health, 1,500 mana. Rocking only 86 ability power, but that'll add up over time. And yeah, so also just very happy with how this game is going. So we are in a champion select. We will get those lineups posted to you pretty soon. But game two of Rock Solid vs. Oh God Bears happening right now. Locking in with that awesome little Teemo. Always a good choice. I assume he wasn't one of the picks. Let's actually pull that one up on the screen right there. It looks like we got it right down there. Interesting. Oh, this, this is cute. So Rock Solid grabbed Malzahar, Nocturne, Sona, Ash, Warwick. Now, interesting that we have Nocturne and Warwick, but okay, right? That's, that's a decent, like, normal team. Maybe a Lanewick. Yeah, maybe a Lanewick, right? It could even be Lane Nocturne. We, we've had people say For both sure. those are good. Yeah. Um, oh, God, Bears, here, here it is, right? So we've got Evelyn, Jarvan, and Amumu, and Twisted Fate, and Jax. So they've got the Twisted Fate, Evelyn, Coordinate ganks. And they've got, you know, the Great Amumu jungler, the Jarvan solo top, and then Jax. And the thing is, you know, Jax will lane well against most of those champions, and... You know, we'll see how that plays out, but that's kind of interesting. I, you know, actually, Lanewick might have been a counterpick to Jax. I don't know who was, I don't know who was first pick versus last pick, but like, if Jax was picked and then they picked Lanewick to counter him, I could totally see that. But um, I, I'm unsure on that one. Speaking about GG, now hitting level nine, it has his own Rod of Ages, only at 17 minutes. So that's not bad at all. Um, he can't even turn his internet back on. Apparently, Double F just can't even connect back into the game. That's, I, wow, that's really bad. Um. I mean, I'll leave it up to, for Abbott to decide what they want to do with this game, but right now, Big Fat GG getting dropped down by Westbrook. Kobe24 jumping in there, putting a headbutt on a Dyrus as well. But Kobe not in great shape for this. He's got his ultimate on, but that doesn't really matter so much. He's taking a ton of damage from uh, Vayne and Corky. We're going to see uh, West Rise pushing this tower, like you said. They were uh, pushing Alistar back right there. Kobe not able to really do that much as Jungle Alistar in that fight. His ultimate was on, but you have Vayne with true damage right there. West Rice playing Corky, a hard carry, and they were just able to slice right through that. Malzahar punishing that top tower, and it looks like he has Nunu right on his inside, but they obviously don't know that each other are there on either side of the wall. Some pretty good wards placed right now by CLG in their jungle. Not too offensively, though, just more defensively to catch people off guard. There is one up top by mid tower on the left side in the jungle of EG at this point in time but not really anything they can utilize Swain coming up towards Malzahar to try to do some damage he will come back down farm these out and try to get that lane pat push back out so they can focus on rat packing around the map and trying to get a team fight in looks like Annie and Tarek down bottom lane still soaking up some XP we can see Vayne coming in the middle as Alistar kind of roaming around the jungle doing what Alistar does Kobe making his way around he does have blue uh, golem buff on that's going to help him just to pretty much spam everything he needs to spam. Looks like they have control over the dragon area. They're possibly just going to get this, get some control over that. We are breaching the 19th minute of this game, 5-4. to four, And it could be just the bottom tower push. Alistar is going to hide in the bushes down bottom. Let's start this up for the other game. Get the observer rolling on so we can give you guys an update. Like I said before, we are going to be updating both games. We have a few games running. We have Rock Solid and... Uh, OGB going on in the other game as well as CG, CLG versus EG right now that you are watching. Good games going on so far. CLG versus EG in their second match right now. Third match, I'm sorry. Yes, one to one. And uh, it looks like Oracle's on Tarek. He will be going down. They're going to start clearing the jungle of wards after this. Make sure they can get in an offensive position. It looks like Vayne and Alistar may have a little tussle in middle, but she is going to dodge away from that and head towards her team. 
No wards in the jungle to figure out that they are trying to steal the red right now, but they will give that to Corky. That's going to help him out a little bit. Not really that Alistar needs it. It would have been nice to give to Vayne or Ash, but they will not be able to do so for now. Malzahar is still farming. Pretty, pretty, uh, you know, serene game going on right now. Not too many attacks here and there. Wow, a lot of damage. The Condemn into the wall. Kobe taking a good amount of damage. Not seeing Nunu there, and he's just going to be forced to walk through the absolute zero on a full proc. And it looks like they have a 3v4 situation. One down right now. 4v4 as Hotshot enters the fight, laying down the pool. That percentage damage always doing a lot. And Ignite dropping Nunu from the hands of Big Fat GG. And it looks like Swain to come in here with his ultimate and really start to take people down. Taking down Annie. Sauce picks up another kill for himself. St. Vicious is made to back off with just a fourth of his health left. And it looks like they will have a good amount of minions here to put some damage on this mid tower. Hotshot GG at full health because he was on the outside of that one. Land pulls down, trying to get his ultimate focused on somebody. He did not have the chance. Malefic Visions on to Swain. And that's actually doing a lot of damage, taking him from almost health, uh, full health to half right now. As Corky firing some ultis from the right side, they're going to go ahead and clear out the jungle. Very nice initiation there. In and out of the bushes. A good ignite onto uh, Nunu by Big Fat. And he was able to pick up that kill. But right now... The upper hand going into the hands of EG now 7-6 to six in 21 minutes. And uh, we're going to see how these guys can do from here on out. The lanes are quite pushed in favor of EG. They've only lost two turrets to, I believe, the three turrets lost on CLG's side. So we are back into the action. It is 7-6 in EG's favor. They have gotten three turret kills. Um, judging by the fact that the dragon is dead right now, so CLG has at least gotten one dragon, maybe two. Uh, they have killed one, two turrets for themselves, so in terms of global objectives, they're at least tied, maybe a slight advantage to CLG. The kill score only one up for Epic Gamers, so despite all of our, all, all the players' technical difficulties in getting themselves into the game and everyone taking turns disconnecting, we are back in the action with about as equal a game as you could possibly get without counting minions, because I haven't been looking at that very closely. And it's 170, 160, 100, uh, 100, 140, close to 100. Not, I mean, it's, it's definitely better uh, for EG, or but... You know, Dan and Doublelift are really low, and, and Big Fat GG, and, you know, they're not, they're not that far behind. Uh, it's pretty close, so um, we'll see how this plays out. Certainly a very close game. I think EG has a little bit more money. They certainly have that one extra kill. Um, they may have a few more minions in the right places, but this is still a very close game. They're pushing on to this mid turret right now. Hacha GG. Oh, there comes the Ash arrow, and that's going to smack Sauce in the face. There's the ultimate from Malzahar. He is going down extremely oh. quickly. He flashes away as best he can. He's trying to run away. He's got Malefic Visions on him. Dan Din now getting caught right now. And Dan not in great shape. Takes his shield oh. just barely. Oh. Jana blows everyone back. Oh, man. They are trying their hardest to get away from this. Jana putting out that shield. Double S finally pulling his weight. Just buying. Went, went from boots to Catalyst and two Doran's rings. So, um... Wow. And now Corky's going to get himself a blue buff right now. It's going to be pretty nice for West Rice. going to get a lot of extra gold uh, XP. And of course, the free mana and cooldown reduction. Not exactly a bad thing to have. And West Rice pulling that golem. Uh, and yeah, wow. CLG picked up another dragon for themselves. So they're in good shape. They, they won that fight more or less. Of course, no kills really happened. But they forced the entire team back. And by doing that, they got themselves a the dragon. So uh, basically, Ash Arrow gave a dragon kill. So Ash Arrow is worth like a good you know thousand gold. And, you know, not going to throw that one away, so good stuff there. You're actually right about the Rock Solid game. It was a Lanewick versus Jax up top, and they were actually make that first blood onto Lanewick as he was pushing Jax. He actually had a big upper hand in that. So there's your first blood in the Rock Solid OGB matches. We jump now back to CLG versus EG. It's really going back and forth right now. There was a fight in favor of EG. You know, double lift, trying to get back into the game. So his internet went out, and now he's back in. Was actually able to save his team on that fight, so very advantageous that he was there for that. And they were able to save Nunu and uh, one other coming out of that fight with just a sliver of health left. It appears that Alistar down bottom, kind of farming out by himself. That's going to be Kobe24 doing what he can to soak up more XP, and he has a lot of minions to mess with right now. And he's just kind of hanging out down there. Saul's still unwarranted in mid. Nobody's really uh, bothering him as he just farms away. And it looks like another kill coming up in the other game as not too much going on in the CLG EG game right now as they're focusing on their lanes, getting the lanes pushed, getting their minions up. It looks like Hotshot GG now to be the one to disconnect. And we're going to see if he can get back into game. Everybody pretty much having trouble with their internet service provider at this point in time. Minions are pushed up in favor of CLG at this point except for mid lane. So they have a lot of ground to start this fight. If anything starts to happen, St. Vicious and Big Fat GG with Kobe trying to guard that tower. It does not have much health left. A few Vayne shots will take that down. One from Swain, and there you do see Vayne 
taking a, or doing a lot of damage to that turret. Diving in a huge shot as she procs that last Silver Bolt. Anna cannot condemn just the last roll in Silver Bolt. And it looks like even with an ultimate, Kobe24 goes down. Vayne picks up a kill for herself. Not somebody you want to give too many kills to. She can destroy your team. That passive makes it so hard to get away and so hard to be evasive. A good chase, and there it is. The passive coming into play again. One, two, possibly going for a triple kill. And she only... No, she does get the triple kill. Alistar, Ash, and Big Fat GG as Annie fall. Double lift picking up the last one with the in, with Janna taking out Tarek. And they will be able to take out this one, taking advantage of that DC. And they are going to be able to take out this inhibitor. Not a lot of health on the other team right now. Westrice almost dead, Double Lift almost dead, and Dan Din almost dead. Alistar coming back out, and they will take that as their escape. Exit stage left. They're going to recuperate, kind of clear out the jungle of CLG right now. It looks like they may get a little bit of a push here on bottom turret. No, they don't even want that. Blue is gone, so they will just back, playing it cautious. We're going to see how they come out of this one. It's 25 minutes into the matchup, 11-7 to 7 in favor of EG after that big fight. One good thing here, though, is that it's early enough in the game that, that the champions aren't so much more powerful than turrets that just getting inhibitor means you kind of win the game. That right now, CLG can basically camp and and defend in their base and, and scale up off of these super minions and actually do okay. The minions will generally tend to push towards their side of the map, so as long as they don't shove the lanes too hard, they'll get basically free farm from that dead inhibitor. They're only down the four kills. They've got more dragons. They're in decent shape here, but St. Vicious just getting completely picked up. Tries to put down a ward, gets caught by everyone in EG, and now it's it's a 3v5. They're just going to start taking down Baron. And this is not looking very, very good for CLG right now. Looks like there's not much chance for them, and this is going to be a Baron kill. EG should be able to push themselves in. Now, could be 24 DCing. I don't understand how these players are taking turns getting out of the game. I do not know what's happening here, but this is not exactly the situation CLG is looking for. I just I just can't explain it. I have no idea what's going on at this point for these people. It's just the worst coincidence in the world or who knows, but they're moving into the base now in a 5v3 situation, pushing right down on to these uh in these Nexus turrets. And this is probably going to be GG, I think. Uh, Epic Gamer should take this game, should take game three, and move on to the winner bracket semifinals against the winner of Rock Solid versus Oh God Bears. We're going to actually transition over to that game as this game ends. Chester will um, not quite fall. We'll get back to the turret, but the Nexus will fall. And Epic Gamer will move on to uh, through the winner bracket round one. Two to one on the score there. And we'll see how the rest of this match plays out as uh, we bring you more games today in the Season 1 North American Championship. Top three games go to Dream.